Hello everybody, welcome to uh, my another cooking video that I'm doing. I'm doing uh, my uh, lasagna recipe and a uh, little bit of history about lasagna. Lasagna uh, originated from the region of Bologna in uh, northern Italy, north, uh, north um, east Italy more or less. And um, the original recipe calls for fresh spinach pasta sheets, which I'll be using today. I'm doing a little bit of a twist on it. I'm actually using some guanciale in the recipe, something that's um, not original, I'll be honest, but it's my, uh, my kick. And uh, I hope everybody enjoys the recipe and uh, uh, definitely um, like and subscribe the video. And uh, here it goes. So this is what the spinach should look like when it's uh, just about done here. It's, as you can see, it's all uh, ground up. And this is uh, actually didn't soak up as much moisture content as I thought. So we probably won't have to drain it. Um, so um, I'll show you what it looks like once we grind it down to a paste. Now, if you have um, fresh spinach, it'll probably be like the full leaves here. But uh, this is what it should look like here. Okay, so the next step is to grind up your spinach and do like a paste. You can see it's working there. So you can see the lighting here. Now that we're done this is what it really should look like so it's like as you can see a paste you can see it there all right so our next step is to make some homemade pasta now i personally like to crack the eggs first in a bowl so it's a little less messy and um, it makes it so you can control where the eggs go within the well and I'll show you the well step. I'm sure everybody's probably familiar with the well step when it comes to making pasta. Okay, so now as you can see, we got um, we got some flour. Now you could use any flour. I actually got this as a gift. Uh, it's a pasta flour blend. Uh, it's mainly got um, just regular wheat, but um, some of it is uh, some barley flour, some semolina flour, so it's a good combo for pasta. We're just gonna, gonna just dump this here. Now it's generally 400 grams of flour to four eggs, which it's not an exact measurement. You just wanna make sure that when you're making your pasta that um, the well is big enough so the eggs don't go everywhere. So you want to make sure the eggs are gonna be controlled. See? So this is what the consistency should look like on your pasta. Now I did forget to add the spinach initially, but I got it in the mix. So here we go. This is what it should look like here. And basically what we're going to do, we're going to let this sit in a Ziploc bag for about 30 minutes or so. And then we will be ready to start making our sheets. <laughs>
Okay, the first thing we're going to start off with is some guanciale. That's going to be, uh, like I mentioned, origi original, original. Uh, we got some provolone cheese, some buffalo mozzarella, some pecorino romano. We have some fresh pork. We have a glass of red wine, a glass of water, a little bit of milk for the bechamel sauce, a uh, little bit of butter, some flour, some ground veal, some basada, salt and pepper, and our fresh pasta sheets. Okay, so step one is going to be... Uh, basically grinding up our onions, carrot, and celery in our food processor. Everybody knows how much I love to use this. And this is what your consistency should look like. It should be almost like a puree here. Okay, step one is going to be to put olive oil into our pan. We're using a generous portion here. We're not uh, skimping on the olive oil here today. And I got it on a medium low heat. Step two is going to come in with our carrots, onions, and uh, celery mix. Let me turn my heat down a little bit. Again, we're not cooking these to like get them brown it's just going to be to sweat them out just a little bit of a little bit of cook time nothing nothing crazy and the reason why we're coming in with the guanciale at this point is because we want the guanciale to be crispy we don't want um flimsy guanciale if you know what i mean all right now as you can see i'm going to come in here a little closer you can see the guanciale is starting to cook. And once we get a little bit of cook time here, we're going to come in with the uh, ground meat. The, well, the ground veal, the ground pork. Okay, now it's time for our ground pork and our ground veal. So we're going to start with the ground veal. Just going to come in there. And then we're going to come in with the ground pork as well. And we're just going to chop this up, you know. Obviously, let it, let it do its thing. Let it so this is what it should look like once the meat is cooked. And now we're just going to come in with our glass of wine, right? We're just going to glaze the, going to cook that in there. And that's going to cook off. We're not going to have any alcohol in the dish. And it's um, going to basically just dissolve in there. And again, this is for flavor. This is going to all cook out. Okay, and once we get the wine to cook itself out, so as you can see, this is where we're at. We're going to come in with our tomato. Passata. And I'm going to go in with one. And then I'm going to go with another half of a one. And then we're going to use the other half for the top of our lasagna. And then we're also just going to come in with a little salt and pepper because we need our flavor, right? Good bit of pepper. Not as afraid as a pepper as the salt. And we are going to mix, mix, mix. Trying to get a, get a good shot here of the video what we're doing here so that is what your sauce should look like and this could also be used for pasta remember and ultimately we're going to cook this for probably two hours Maybe one hour with the lid, 
come in with a glass of water one hour without the lid. So um, stay tuned, guys. So as that's cooking, we're going to do a bechamel sauce. We're doing this the right way. We're going to start with a little bit of butter. Uh, be generous with the butter. Butter is not afraid of you. And we're going to come in with a little flour. Um, your, your typical baking flour. And you're just going to come in and whisk like so. A little bit more flour here. And with a little bit more butter. Come in with a little bit more flour. And we're making a little bit of a mess here, but it's okay. And then once we get that dissolved, we're going to come in with our milk. As you can see, this is where we're at. It's almost like a butter consistency. Just a little bit at a time. Little goes a long way. Okay, so this is the consistency that you should want. I'm going to bring you a little closer here. It's a little hard to see. Um, it should be pretty thick. And uh, once you get it to the right consistency, that's when you're going to come in with a little bit of your nutmeg. So the nutmeg is going to give you a little of that nutty characteristic that you'd like. And uh, you could also come in with a little bit of salt. So a little bit of salt is, is going to give you a little, little oomph as well. Nothing crazy, just a little salt. Okay. And this is your bechamel sauce. I mean, look how beautiful that looks. All right, look at this sauce here. I mean, you cannot tell me it doesn't look like some sauce. And we're also preheating our oven to 350 for 20 minutes. And I'll show you how we're gonna assemble the lasagna. Okay, I, I apologize guys. I forgot to record uh, while I was assembling the lasagna. So I know I am initial steps here as far as showing you guys. But basically what I did was I took each layer I put uh, pecorino, uh, some of the sauce, Pecorino Romano. I put the buffalo mozzarella, the provolone. I used a little bit of olive oil on the bottom so it doesn't stick. And then I basically just built the layers up like you normally would with any other typical uh, lasagna dish. And then I'm going to put it in the oven for 350 degrees at 20 minutes. I'll let it cook, put a little bit of cheese on top, and then cook it without the, the foil and show you how the cheese melts. All right, so now we're about to reveal the lasagna. And let you take a peek as to how this looks. Look at that. Okay, now what we're going to do. Let's get some of our pecorino. And just cover the whole top.
Look at that. All right. We're just going to do the remainder. Maybe a remainder 10, 15 more minutes without the lid. Because I'm such a generous giving person, I've also decided to include some extra pasta here in the video. Some colavita. Uh, this is going to be panoni lishi. And I feel like this could be a compliment to the lasagna on the side. Some of our extra sauce. All right, so I just um, put the pasta in with the sauce here, and um, the noodles were boiling, so this is what our pasta looks like. All right, everybody, as you can see, I'm really enjoying the lasagna here. I cut it when it cooled off a little bit. And uh, you'll be enjoying me eating it in the credits. And uh, hope everybody likes and subscribes and uh, enjoy the video.